When I made my first ever video regarding the moon landing, my comment section was an absolute state. I was getting ripped to pieces by almost everyone, claiming that they could not believe that I believe we actually went to the moon. Now, it seems that most of these people have disappeared, but the ones that make the YouTube videos unfortunately haven't. So today, I bring you one of the most famous moon landing deniers to ever grace your screens. The guy that Buzz Aldrin punched in the face. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Ford Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Right, back to today's video, which is on a moon landing denier uh, called a Mr. Bart Sibrel. Now, back in 2002, Bart went up to Buzz Aldrin in the street and asked him to swear on the Bible that the moon landing was real. Now, swearing on the Bible, of course, doesn't mean much, but Buzz Aldrin got so frustrated with Bart and his pretty much offensive behaviour towards him, he ended up punching Bart in the face. Now, I do not condone violence whatsoever. It should never be the answer. But what makes this Bart such an expert on the moon landing, I wonder? Let's find out, shall we? Some people say it's hard to believe that the moon landings were faked. I say it's hard to believe that they were real. What NASA is claiming is that they went 1,000 times farther than they can go today with 50 year older technology on the very first attempt with one millionth the computing power in all of NASA than is in a cell phone. I have never understood this argument. We went with the technology we had at the time, and that wasn't the first time or the first attempt, by the way. There was, of course, several missions that happened before Apollo 11. Apollo 8 and Apollo 10 both orbiting the moon before returning home. But make no mistake, though, the Apollo computers were state-of-the-art for their time. And of course, we're now going back to the moon, this time with much more powerful computers. All the proof that you need that the moon landings are fake is in this one picture. In sunlight, shadows will always run parallel with one another. This is because the sun is about a million times bigger than the Earth, and it casts shadows in the same direction over an entire continent. So you'll see in sunlight, shadows always run parallel and never intersect. Absolutely true, but the perspective on how we view them sometimes makes a difference. In your first example with the lamppost, you're looking from the side at those two shadows, and they appear parallel great. But if you stand and take a photo from the middle of these posts, look what you get. Now, we know that the sun's rays come in parallel, as you just stated, but look at the shadows. The shadow on the far left is pointing at a much different angle to the shadow on the far right. This is all down to perspective, much like if you're stood in the middle of a train track and take a photo, the train tracks appear to converge at the horizon. Here's a picture which the federal government claims was taken on the moon. The astronaut shadow runs at 12 o'clock, and this rock, only about five feet away, the shadow runs at nine o'clock. This is a 90 degree difference from objects five feet apart from one another. Now, first off, I think you've been very generous or creative with those angles there. Let's have a proper look, shall we? The shadow from the rock looks to be more at this angle, and the astronaut is perhaps a bit off on this angle. And as I mentioned earlier, this is purely down to perspective and where you are viewing this from. In fact, others have pointed this out too. Here's another example as to how it works on Earth's surface compared to the moon's. This proves that this was taken on Earth with an electrical light inside of a television studio. This is all the proof that you need that the moon landings were fake. Well, it's not really. It's actually pretty poor proof. And in terms of proving that the moon landing was faked, I've seen much more convincing stuff. If Toyota said that they made a car 50 years ago that could go 50,000 miles on a gallon of gasoline, and yet today their best car could only go 50 miles per gallon, or 1,000th the distance, wouldn't the fraud of the previous claim be obvious? Well, not necessarily, because what if they made that car and it was powered by feet, like the Flintstones car? Then, in theory, it could go 50,000 miles. But your argument, again, is a poor one. As we all know, NASA's budget has reduced dramatically since the 60s, since the days of the Apollo missions. Only now have NASA been given comparatively enough money for us to go back, which is what we're doing. 
And yet, this is exactly the moon landing fraud. And yet, people don't see it because of their emotional attachment to it. They're claiming they went a thousand times farther 50 years ago than they can go today with 50 year older technology. But that doesn't mean we can't go that far again. It just means we likely don't have the budget. It is incredibly expensive to get to the moon, buddy. That doesn't make any sense. It's the only time in history that a technological achievement like the automobile or the airplane or nuclear power that no nation on earth could repeat it 50 years later, when in fact it should be 100 times greater 50 years later. If they could go to the moon with 1960s technology, men would be in another solar system by now. What an absolutely ridiculous statement to make. The absolute nearest solar system to us, the nearest would be Proxima Centauri, and that's around 4.2 light years away. Do you know how long it would take to get there, even if we could travel a thousand times faster than they did for the Apollo moon missions to get to the moon? 14,000 years. Men would have walked on Mars 10 years later, 40 years ago, which never happened. I mean, the issue here is that Bart is blissfully unaware at just how hard space travel is. And there would be bases on the moon there today, of which there are none. It's the only time in the history of the world that technology that cost $175 billion was deliberately destroyed afterwards. Would Bill Gates spend $175 billion to make the first computer, and then when he was done, throw it and the schematics in the trash? But that's what NASA claims that they did. Now they're talking about the launch system here, the Saturn V rocket, which was incredibly difficult and expensive to make. Only 15 were built and pretty much all of them were used. To make them all again would be incredibly hard to do so on such a limited budget. They only did that to destroy the evidence of the fraud, which is proof itself that they didn't go, because if they really went, they would never destroy the technology. Oh, I don't know. I think they could have fished out all the stages of the Saturn V rockets and then sellotaped them together. The B-52 bomber was made 70 years ago and is still in service today in the United States Air Force because it worked so well. Okay, but that proves nothing. The B-52 bomber doesn't break up after every flight, does it? Now they want to return to the moon and they're having to recreate all that equipment from scratch because they deliberately destroyed it in order to hide the evidence of the fraud. I say it's harder to believe that the moon landings are real than to believe that they were fake. And this one picture proves that you don't have a clue about anything. Now, Bart also talks about the Van Allen belts in one video. Let's see if he has any idea about them. Oh, well, what can I do? I have to talk about what everyone wants me to talk about, and I guess it's become my morbid specialty, why we didn't go to the moon. A lot of people don't realize, just like about 9-11, they don't realize there was a building seven, a third building that collapsed in its own footprint. <laughs> so many people don't know that. M many people don't know that the Earth is surrounded by deadly radiation called the Van Allen radiation belt. Many people don't know that, no, but from what you're about to say in regards to using the Van Allen belts as proof we didn't go tells me you don't know much about them either. It's deadly because the sun, let's say this is the sun over here, it sends out cosmic rays. The Earth's magnetic field traps them around here and it itself becomes a barrier of protection for future cosmic rays. Yes, indeed, the Van Allen belts are caused by Earth's magnetic field and how that interacts with the charged particles emitted by the sun. The fact he is continuing tells me he doesn't know enough about them. So when the space shuttle orbits the Earth, it's right about here which is only about 200 miles above the Earth. So just pick a spot geographically from you that's about 200 miles away, 250 miles away, I think, actually, and put that vertical, and that's as far as the space station is. In fact, every manned mission, Gemini, Mercury, Skylab, the space shuttle, Soyuz, uh, you know, have all been in Earth orbit around here, except going to the moon. Let's say the moon is this little dot over here. They would have to go through this in order to reach the moon. And it's my belief that they never left Earth orbit. The secret tape from a funny thing happened on the way to the moon proves they were in Earth orbit the entire time. So Bart thinks space travel itself is real, 
just we didn't go as far as the moon. Now let's put this one to bed once and for all, shall we? Let's have a look at the flight path for Apollo 11 in regards to leaving Earth's orbit. Now, the Van Allen belts are strongest over the equator and almost absent at the poles. As you can see here, the Apollo 11 craft on both leaving and returning to Earth traveled through the weakest parts of the belt. And they even calculated how long they would be in there and how much radiation the astronauts would be exposed to. Turns out it wasn't a massive amount, Jesus. About 1.8 milligrays for the entire trip. A safe amount to be exposed to is around 50 milligrays. So NASA designed the flight path for minimal exposure, something you would have known if you'd really had looked into the Van Allen belts properly. But as usual, with these sorts of things, you listen to something someone else has said and you run with it without thinking logically. Dear, oh dear. Right, that's it. What a mess from Bart there. Bit of an embarrassment, really. I'm definitely going to look at him again. He is responsible for the famous documentary A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon. Now, I can break that down, but a lot of people already have. If you'd like to see it, let me know in the comments and I'll do my version of it. And who knows, I might even invite this Bart onto the channel which could be interesting. Thank you so much for watching today. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button too. Um, your subscription clearly helps. Uh, we're on our way to half a million. Uh, hopefully we'll get there pretty soon. I've been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a great week and I'll see you on Friday for the return of the gate guy. See you then.